Okay, problem number 12 says if f of x equals 2 over 5x squared and g of x equals 3x squared, what does f of f of x equal? Well, we really don't even need this g of x thing. We just need to find f of f of x, and what that means is substitute this expression back into itself right where the x is. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Right here is the original function, 2 over 5x squared. This g of x one, we don't even need that to answer this problem because it's saying what is f of f of x? Well, f of f of x means this. If we had another expression written the same way, f of x equal to 2 over 5x squared, f of f of x means substitute this thing right in here for the x. So we would have 2 over 5 times what? Times x, but we're substituting in for x, the original function, 2 over 5x squared. So it's 2 over 5 times x, which is 2 over 5x squared, and then that gets squared. Don't forget the squared right there. So now we just need to simplify this. So this would be 2 over 5 times squaring this. So 2 squared is 4, and 5x squared would be 25x to the fourth. The 5 simplifies with the 25. Just gives me 5 down there, so we have 2 over 4. 2 over 4 over 5x to the fourth. 2 is 2 over 1 times the reciprocal of this, which is 5x to the fourth over 4. Finally, just simplify this a little bit. 2 goes into the 4 2 times, so we end up with 5x to the fourth over 2, and that would be the answer to that problem. Okay, problem number 13 says, um, what is the sum of the solutions to this absolute value equation? Well, if you have an absolute value equation and the absolute value equals a positive number on the other side, then you'll get two equations. One equation comes from just dropping the absolute value. So we want to solve this equation, 3x minus 7 equals 6, and solve 3x minus 7 equals a negative 6. And those two solutions will be the solution to that absolute value equation. This one, to solve this, add 7 to both sides, you get 3x equals 13. Divide through by 3, you get 13 thirds. On this one, add 7, you get 3x equals 1. Divide by 3, you get 1 third. Then it says, what is the sum of the solutions? Well, sum means to add them, so we need to add the 13 thirds and the 1 third, and that gives us 14 thirds. And that would be the answer to the sum of those solutions. On problem number 14, let's take a look at that one. On 14, let me scroll up here. It just, we need to simplify this. Well, this, I see divide here, so I don't need to worry about getting a common denominator, but what I have to do is invert this fraction and then multiply. So it need to be times the 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 is going to be in the numerator, and the 6x plus 1 is in the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that problem. I have it flipped now to be multiplication. So I flipped that, like I just said. Now, this right here is, needs to be factored. The 6x squared, you could try 3x and 2x, but we want the factors of 4 to differ by 23, so that's a big difference. So I used 6x and x. Now, they need to subtract to be minus 23. So if I use a minus 4 here and a positive 1 here, those are the factors of 4 that when I fact, foil this thing back together, I'll get 1x minus 24x, which is a minus 23x. So that's the first one factored. This one, x squared minus 16, that's the difference of two squares, which factors into the sum and difference of their square roots. So x plus 4x minus 4. 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 is another trinomial that factors into, well, 2x squared breaks into 2x and x. Minus here means that the signs are different, 1's plus and 1 minus. Factors of 4 that when I substitute them in, they subtract to give me 7. I could try 2 and 2, but that's a pretty big difference, so I used 4 and 1. And if I use the 4 here and the 1 here and check my inner and outer, that would be a minus 1x, and this outer is a positive 8x, which gives me a positive 7x. So that one's factored. And this is just a binomial that's already as far down as it could go. Then at this point, just cross off terms on the top with terms that are identical to that on the bottom. And we're just left with 2x minus 1, and that would be the answer to that problem right there. 2x minus 1 is the answer to problem 14. On well, problem 15, it gives you a drawing like this, and it says, what is x? 
Well, this is a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to get this side. And then once we get this side, we can use the Pythagorean theorem again to get this side. So that's how we're going to take care of that problem. So on this, this is 4 and this is 3. I know this squared plus this squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So let's figure out this length right here. Um, I'll say this equals, a, I'll just put h for hypotenuse squared. So 3 squared plus 4 squared, that's 9 plus 16 is 25. So 25 equals h squared. So therefore, take the square root of both sides, you get h equals 5. So this length right here is 5. Now use the Pythagorean theorem one more time to get this length. So 9 squared plus 5 squared has to equal, I don't know, this side right here. I'll call it uh, c squared. You can call it whatever you want, x or whatever. 9 squared is 81 plus 25 equals c squared. Well, 81 plus 25 is 106, so 106 equals c squared. Take the square root, so c equals the square root of 106. Now, the only thing you might ever have to do with something like this is break it, uh, the square root down. What I mean by that is 106, let me do this here, 106 is equal to 2 times uh, 53, and if 53 would break down again, maybe you might be able to pull something out of the square root. For example, what I mean is, let's say we had the square root of 8. Well, the square root of 8 is the same as uh, square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Okay, 4 times 2 is 8. But the square root of 4 is 2, and I'm left over with a square root of 2. So the square root of 8 breaks down to 2 square roots of 2. So for every if you can take a perfect square out of a square root, you can go ahead and do that, but this one doesn't do that. Okay, 16 uh, says this. It uh, reads, let me move up here a little bit. It says the equation 4x squared minus 8x equals negative 3 has two solutions, x1 and x2. If x1 is less than x2, in other words, if x1 is the smaller of the two answers, what does x2 equal in terms of x1? Hmm. Okay, so we have to solve this equation. Let's do that first. So uh, to solve it, here's the equation, 4x squared minus 8x equals negative 3. Add 3 to both sides to set the quadratic equation here equal to 0. Hopefully it factors, and it does. 4x squared could have broken into 4x or x or 2x and 2x. The signs are the same, both negative, so I need a negative sign here on both of these. Factors of 3, well, there's only one factor of 3, and that's 3 and 1. If I put the 3 and a 1, and check the inner and outer. Here's minus 2x, and here's another minus 6x, which gives me minus 8x. So let's solve these then. To solve this, I set each factor equal to 0. 2x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1, I get x, uh, 2x equals 1. Divide through by 2, and I get x equals 1 half. So that's the smaller of my two answers, I believe, because the other one, 2x minus 3 equals 0. Add the 3, you get 2x equals 3. Divide through by 2, and you get x equals 3 halves. So x equals 3 halves. Now, the problem said that uh, x1 is less than x2. So this is my x1, because it's the smaller of the two answers, and here's x2. And it says, uh, what does x2 equal in terms of x1? Well, x2 is 3 times bigger than this. 3 halves is 3 times bigger than x1. So, therefore, uh, we get uh, 3 times x1. So, x2 is equal to 3 times x1. And that's what they're looking for on that type of problem right there. That's a tough problem. Okay, let's go to problem number 17. And I'll have to get another sheet of paper on that one. So, let me get that.